یکی بود یکی نبود غیر از خدا هیچ کس نبود Essa esperança, né, isso que eu sentia dentro de mim, eu jamais ia imaginar que era uma mensagem de alguém que viveu no Irã e viesse espalhar em Iranduba e eu seria uma das privilegiadas de reconhecer a mensagem de Bahá'u'llá, né, que veio de tão longe e veio para esse pedacinho aqui de, de Iranduba, né. A gente sempre brincava com nossos colegas, né, Iranduba era um pedacinho do Irã. Eu nasci na ilha da Maria Antônia, né? A nossa família, meus pais, agricultor e, além disso, tinha outra profissão como pescador, né? A nossa casa, então, era uma pequena casa para dez pessoas, oito irmãos, mais meu pai e minha mãe, para essa quantidade de pessoas, casas pequenas. Na época era muito, assim, muitas dificuldades, né? E assim, a nossa rotina era trabalhar, né? capinar, plantar, roça, milho. E a maior dificuldade deles era para quem vender. As pessoas que queriam ir lá para comprar, eles cobravam muito barato, né? era muito trabalho e eles acabavam praticamente dando os produtos deles para, às vezes até em troca de alimentos, para poder a gente continuar trabalhando, né? sustentando a família. Né? As dificuldades eram muitas, né? muitas dificuldades assim, mas era a assim, gente uma vida feliz, né? Porque a gente estava sem direção, né? O que fazer na vida? Né? Não temos para onde ir. Como que, o que, é que nós vamos fazer daqui para frente, né? Só que sempre a gente tinha uma preocupação, né? Do qual seria o nosso futuro? O que que, que nos esperava pela frente? Certo dia apareceu um casal, né, o seu Farhang e Dona Catarina. É, eles já morando aqui em Iranduba, falando de, uma, de um curso, de uma proposta de estudo, né, que oferecendo para a comunidade ribeirinha. Né. Eu conquistei é, meus estudos, Casei, formei uma família, tenho três filhas. Todas as pessoas que me conhecem percebem um grande diferencial. E isso é uma grande transformação. Depois que eu tive contato com as escrituras sagradas, comecei a estudar, né? Eu comecei a sonhar, é que eu sonhava voando e que eu me sentia leve, que eu me sentia como se fosse um pássaro 
que lá de cima era uma felicidade imensa, que eu estava feliz, eu conseguia ver assim, a felicidade das pessoas, eu conseguia ver em cima a, a mata, os rios, as árvores florescendo. Toda vez que eu sonhava, me impulsionava né, a conhecer mais a mensagem de Barraulá. Todos os meus sonhos que eu sonhava, eu consegui realizar. Tudo que eu conquistei, eu agradeço a fé, eu agradeço a Barraulá. Tudo. Eu agradeço todos os dias. writings of Baha'u'llah are incredible. They're vast, not just in quantity, but in their depth. And it's very bizarre to be this Canadian who is deeply invested in these writings of Baha'u'llah. As a writer, as a creator, as a theater artist, as an educator, they provide me with a profound source of guidance, an invaluable source of inspiration. I think Baha'u'llah's writings talk about what we currently call, in many circumstances, embodiment. Being really present in your body, in the moment. It's throughout his writings. When I train actors, physical embodiment practice, being present in the breath, in the body, is critical. Working with a foundation of truthfulness is critical in the arts whether you're talking about actors who have to be truthful or people who are creating work. When I'm working with creators, I really encourage them to look at the needs of our time. I work with encouraging them to really do some deep searching, deep heartfelt personal searching. Baha'u'llah's writings encompass practical, spiritual, day-to-day -day principles that are critical for the practice of the artist, for the practice of anyone, really. At this time in particular, when things are so hard, it's hard to know what it means to be an artist. Why make art? Why? But the Baha'i writings give me hope because it speaks about the importance of the arts, the role of the arts. And I think our materialism has made us lose faith that the arts have any role at all. So even though it's hard, I keep, because of Baha'u'llah, because of the inspiration from those writings and because of the standard that he holds us to, I keep making art. To bring hope and maybe even a little love. I feel so blessed to be a Baha'i, to have found this religion from Iran. Uh, personally blessed. And, and in terms of it's given me a calling, I get to use the principles from the Baha'i faith every day in everything that I do. I was just um, visiting my sister yesterday, and she's also a Baha'i. And we were laughing, talking about whether we would even be alive if we weren't Baha'is, because it has given us such guidance and mm, love. It's really simple in some ways. Oh, my servant, if he could apprehend with what wonders of my munificence I can't get through this without crying right now. <sighs> okay, I try again. <sighs> oh, my servant, if he could apprehend with what wonders of my munificence and bounty I have willed to entrust your souls. Ye would of a truth rid yourselves of attachment to all created things. And you would gain a true knowledge of your own selves. 
a knowledge which is the same as the comprehension of my own being. My name is Guillaume Yagatelli. From a young age, I was attracted to spiritual things because I think I had a sense of justice. At one point, I became a born-again Christian. And those who still know me in those days, they say, Guillaume used to have the Bible. I was proud of having my Bible because it was like, laugh at me. But when Jesus is going to come, I'm be the one laughing at you. <laughs> As I was thinking about this, I could realize that something was wrong in this way of thinking, because then everybody else except them was the right. I decided to, to make a prayer, the Lord's Prayer, which is the one that Christ has taught his disciples. Every morning, I've been making that prayer, asking for guidance from God. One day, I went to visit a friend of mine. And then I saw a book, The Feet in the Night by um, William Seals. It's hard to talk about, talk about the joy that he feels in this moment. It's like, oh, I found something that I've been searching for. This idea that, oh, Catholic, Muslims, and others are, in fact, members of one, one family of God. Being a Baha'i is truly about love, and don't need to put many words, it could fit it. When I was a kid, I used to have a dream of people running. I never told it to anybody because I was so scared by this dream. Later on, when the Jesus had happened, in my mind it was that dream that was materializing. Rwanda and Burundi were divided societies, the majority Hutu against the minority Tutsis. In the days of genocide, the radio was encouraging people to kill the cockroaches because Tutsis were then cockroaches that had to be killed. There was a lot of hatred. In all the wars of the past, usually women were spared, but in this one, not the case. Mm. And this, her name was Cecile. She was killed at the same time as my stepmother, my younger sister. My name was Clemens, she was one year older than me. For us to think that we were going to be saved, it would have taken a miracle for this to happen. Of course, I was angry. How would you see those people who did this? How would you take them? Should they be killed? Should they pay for whatever they've done wrong? It was a dilemma. It is like, if I don't join the rebellion, who is then going to defend my, my family? Am I going to leave it to somebody else to defend my own family? Early on, I came to understand that revenge is not a way to help them. They have gone. Whichever way they might have been humiliated, where they are in the next world, but how would I compensate in many ways? My worry now was rather, what do I do? So that somehow, the next world, when we meet, when my father can say, you, but thank you for what you've done. I decided not to go to war, to work hard, not to have that sense of superiority, to have integrity of what I do, also trying to be selfless. It was, for instance, when Hutus are being killed in Burundi, in the universities, trying to be kind to Hutus, I come to understand that Baha'is were there for peace. We are therefore for unity of the humankind.
people have to understand that we are one. What is important is the good thing that we've done. It is the kindness to others, service to others is much more valuable than many other things that we think are valuable. And for me, this is aligned with what Baha'is, what Baha'u'llah has been teaching us, service to others. The Baha'i faith has brought me to understand that we are one and to even value that diversity, to get closer to the one that looks different from the way I look. And not to see him as an enemy, but well as a friend. I feel probably that's what I will need to give to those after me. You know, that sense of unity that we are one. Hi, my name is Yasmin. I'm 25 years old and I live in Toronto, Canada. I graduated from the Richard Ivey School of Business. Here I was having gone to one of the best business schools in the country and it was sort of expected that we would go on to these high-powered careers. I think, you know, in the last particularly six years, I've seen everyone around me make choices that, you know, in your early 20s you make that shape the rest of your life, really. I was allured by the business world. I was allured by this idea that I could become, especially as a woman, I could become this, like, high-powered businesswoman, and I could become, you know, uh, somebody that other people thought of as intelligent and looked to for advice for their companies, for their lives, these kinds of things. That is an alluring concept. Who wouldn't want to go for that, you know? So you get so wrapped up into this, this way of thinking, you don't, you don't even know how to pull yourself out of it. I started to think, you know, what would it look like to give a period of service? I actually was presented with this big choice, you know? I think people see that the world is imperfect, that there are weird things happening, and especially I think that they recognize there's a lack of, you know, love in the world. There's a lack of feeling um, as though people are caring for one another, and there's definitely a desire to do something about it. And I'm realizing more and more every day that not only was it the right choice for me, but it's reshaping the way that I think about my entire life. It's very scary in this country to feel as though you are exposed. And because we're not in a part of the world where prayer and a connection to God is like a part of our community life, that it's very easy to hide yourself from the people around you and to just make a person that you want people to see. There are these writings that make you want to expose yourself and make yourself better. And I think I had been longing for that. I came to this moment in my heart like, would God ever not accept a choice to serve others? Would he ever not confirm such a choice? He says, Verily God has chosen you for his love and knowledge. 
God has chosen you for the worthy service of unifying mankind. God has chosen you for the purpose of investigating reality and promulgating international peace. God has chosen you for the progress and development of humanity, for spreading and proclaiming true education, for the expression of love toward your fellow creatures and the removal of prejudice. God has chosen you to blend together human hearts and give light to the human world. The doors of his generosity are wide, wide open to us, but we must be attentive, alert, and mindful, occupied with service to all mankind, appreciating the bestowals of God and ever conforming to his will. Whenever you read anything like that, you realize it really, it has to come down to thinking about others before ourselves. What I want for you, Bahala says, is every day, can you just try and more and more bring the two together? More and more say, okay, people see this, let's, let's make sure that you feel the two are aligned. That's what I feel like is, is what Bahala does. He just makes you, he, he presents this vision of what a person can be and it's so beautiful that you just want to you want to constantly take steps towards that and it's hard and it's uncomfortable at first and it feels different and it takes time but then you just keep at it and you get to a place where you turn back and you say oh my god I was transformed and I didn't even know it.